I'm super excited for what God is doing in this series, what God is just doing here at Discovery, but in this series, it's been a great series, man, and, and we're kind of going off this premise that um, when you know Jesus, when you, you know his personality, you're able to have that relationship um, with him, and, and so it's not just knowing about Jesus, you know, uh, knowing about some of the things, it's actually knowing him, and, I, and that's what we've been diving in the last few weeks, and so... Um, so just a little recap here. We went the first week, if you weren't here, we went into the, the, the playfulness of Jesus. We're talking about Jesus had a sense of humor. He, he, he had fun. He, 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 had a, he, he joked around with his, his friends. Like he was actually like fun to be around. And so talked about the, the playfulness of Jesus. In week two, we talked about Jesus was human. He was 100% God. He was 100% human. And, and so we talked about the humanity of Jesus and what that looked like. And, and he had some of the same, even though he was, he was, you know, the son of God, like he had those same human needs. Like he went through the same things we go through. And that's, that's like whom we can relate with him. The third week was Jesus was honest. The dis, now I love the title of that pastor, the disruptive honesty of Jesus. That, I don't know about you guys, but that jacked me up, man. Because I was like, okay, there's, there's some people I need to talk to. There's some things I need to say. I, I need to be honest honest about, about relationships, you know, that, that I'm in with, with my friends, and it just jacked me up. And so, so much from that. Last week, the fierceness of Jesus. And Jesus is not just this, this weak, timid man that's just kind of like being stepped all over. Like, he's actually fierce, He's actually fierce. Like, he like, talked about, like, he, he pulled those tables. He said, no, this is not going to happen in my house. And so Jesus is fierce. He's, he's actually fierce enough that he would come from heaven to earth and he would die for us. That's the fierce love of Jesus, okay? And so we talked about the fierceness. So this week it's kind of culminating in, in this last installment of, of Rebel King because my hope today is that now that we know some of the personality traits of Jesus, my hope is that we can come to this place where we can now then have an intimate relationship with him. That we can have a personal relationship, a deeper relationship than we have now. Because we can know a lot of things about him, but it's not until you know him. It's not until you know him intimately. It's not until you know him on that deep level. That's where the fullness is at. And that's my hope is that we would come to this place today where we can be in relationship with Jesus. So the title of this sermon is, is simply this, is Jesus was relational. Jesus was relational. Now, now Jesus wasn't this standoff, like, like you know, I don't want to talk to you, like, stuck up, like, selfish, like, oh, I'm superior, like, I'm God, you know, and I'm not going to talk to you, and he just walked by you, like, Jesus wasn't, wasn't like that, he wasn't, he didn't have this attitude of, I'm better than you, like, Jesus was actually very, very down to earth, he was, he was open, he considered others, and especially with his, his close friends, he had great, great, deep, healthy relationships with his close friends friends. Now, these are his friends that were his day ones. Like, they were with him from, from the beginning when he started his ministry. They actually were with him even growing up as a kid. Like, Jesus had these friends that he, he was in relationship with, um, with these friends, with these disciples. And even after Jesus <clears throat> came back to life and resurrected from the grave, he was still the same Jesus. He was still relational with his, with his friends. And so, I want to share this story. It's found in John chapter 21 because Jesus, I don't know if you guys know this, but, but this is important because when you, when you come together with people, when you, when you sit in a place with people and, and talk to people and engage with people, that means something. And Jesus over here after he resurrected, he goes back into, into, the, sit, into the town. He goes back to the Sea of Galilee where he had, he had met the disciples before. And they were out there fishing. And Jesus is out there on the, on, the, on, the, on the shore. And he's just watching them. And he's like, hey, guys. And they look all in. All his friends, his disciples, they're in the boat trying to catch fish. You know, they've been there for a few hours. They've, been, they've actually been there all night. And he's like, over here. Over here, you, you want to you wanna cast your net right there. And the disciples are looking at him like, who is this guy, like, trying to tell us? what? And they look, and they're like, we haven't caught anything all night. We've been here, and we've been casting there. We've caught, casted there already. Cast over there, nothing's happening. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, trust me, like, there's some there. Oh, no, we're not. He's like, trust me, there's some over there. <laughs> like, go and cast your net over there. And so, like, all right, well, it doesn't hurt to try. So they cast their net where Jesus told them to. 
and immediately fish just started swarming. They started catching fish, 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 and their, their net was just heavy, and they pulled it in. And in that moment, the disciples knew, that's Jesus. That's our friend. That's, that's, we've, been, we've been with him. We know. We know this story already. We know who he is. And so we pick it up over here in John chapter 20, verse 12. And Jesus says this when they, they come to him. He says, hey, guys, come. Let's have some breakfast. Let's eat. That's the first thing he says, come, come. And so he, they bring the fish to him, and he has this fire. He snaps his fingers, and, and, and the, the fire just starts happening, you know. It's not the Thanos snap. It's just, it's just a snap of Jesus, and the fire starts happening. They get a grill out there, and they start just, they, they start cooking. He, he, he cooks them a meal. He says, come sit with me, man. Let's talk. Let, let's, let's talk about what some things that have, that have happened. And I love this. He says, let's have some breakfast. He says, Jesus said to them, and not one of the disciples needed to ask who it was because every one of them knew it was the Lord. Like they knew Jesus. They didn't just not know what, they knew him personally and intimately. And then Jesus came close to them and he served them. Now you would think like Jesus just died on the cross. He, he, saved, he saved the world, you know, he covered sin. He did all that. But Jesus still came back because they were his close friends. He came close to them and he served them and he loved them. This this, is, this wasn't new because this is actually something that Jesus did with his friends a lot. He actually did this a lot in his life growing up. They came, they ate together, they broke bread, they talked, they shared, they shared moments with each other throughout his life and even throughout his ministry. They came together and they ate together and they shared these moments together. And this is a big deal. In a lot of cult cultures, it's a big deal. Um, I don't know if it's a big deal with, with you and your family. It's a big deal for us. I, we get together and we have, um, we have dinners together. And it's just there's something special about when you eat with somebody at the dinner table or when you have a meal with somebody. There's something even more special when you actually invite somebody to your house to eat together. <laughs> like like those were, th that's where you share some intimate moments. That's where you're able to talk. You're able to laugh. You're, like something happens in that moment over over a meal. And so here's, here's, the key, here's one of the key things, I think, um, in, in making friendships and, 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 you know, starting new relationships. This is what you want to do here. Write this down, food. Everybody's like, yeah, food. <laughs> I don't know if it got went over, but food. You want to bring food. No? Okay. You want to invite people over for food. Like food makes everything just that much more great is if you have food. So bring some food, invite some people over your house, and have some food, okay? Have some food with, with, your, with your friends. But really, like, this, this meant a lot to Jesus. And to be honest, like, I don't think that, that uh, we're like this so much anymore. I think we've kind of lost, kind of lost this whole, like, hey, let's engage with one another. Let's have dinner with one another at a table. Let's, let's, let's develop some good, really healthy relationships like instead of instead of pursuing relationships, we're running from them. Like we don't we don't want to be in relationship with other people. Like I'm good where I'm at. We kind of just keep it at a distance, and we don't want to have those relationships anymore. I think there's there's three things that contribute, and there's there's many things, but there's three things that I believe contribute to this kind of like anti-relational culture that we live in. It's kind of like this war on relationships. I want to share these with you really quickly. I believe that technology technology <laughs> has hindered us from engaging people. I mean, we know about people. We think we even know people, but we really, like, you really don't know people if you're watching their, their online feed or if you're even friends with them on Facebook. What does that even mean? Like, like you have a thousand friends on Facebook, and those ain't, those ain't really your friends. Those are stalkers. They're just trying to stalk you. They want to know where you, you've been at, what you're doing. But those aren't, those aren't really, like, true relationships. R nowadays, we rather just like text somebody than talk to somebody. Like, I, I'm not, I don't answer my phone. I'm just going to text them. It's easier to text. Like, we, there's this barrier with technology and what it's done to us. And even when we do get together, when we do have a dinner together or, or in the living room together, and this is what everybody's doing, right? Everybody's like this. Yeah, get off your phone, and it's just kind of like, oh, man, like, oh, yeah, 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 I can get off my phone. But it's kind of something you can't, like, it's our culture. It's the culture we live in. My, my, uh, my boys had their first concert, and I was like, yes, they're having their first concert. Where are we going to take them? What are we going to do? Like, it's going to be awesome. And so we're like, 
asking, you know, my son, like, okay, so what's, what's going on? And, and then we find that his concert's actually on Fortnite in his room. And, and, and it's funny because it's actually like a live concert happening. Like, there's people there. There's actual people there. They're just on their, their device in another country. And, and, like, there's actually somebody on stage, and they're, like, having fun, and they're doing all the dances, but it's, like, online. Like, it's not in. I'm like, boy, you need to go to a real concert, okay? <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> it, it is, but it's not. But, but it's just this, this barrier, like, we don't even go out anymore and pursue relationships. I think the second thing is the busyness of life can even cause us to miss out on authentic relationships. We get so busy with work, and we get so busy with what we're pursuing. We get so busy with maybe even some things that we want, and we never make time just to develop some healthy relationships. We never make time to go out and, and meet somebody or invite somebody over because we're just too busy. And I know, I know if you have family, if you have kids, you're changing diapers, you're taking them to school, you're taking them to games. I know, like, that's, that's, that's part of being, you know, a parent and being busy. But, but sometimes I believe that we get so busy that we just don't make time. It's not, it's not value, a value in our lives to go out and say, hey, man, let's, let's meet some new people. Let's get into some healthy, godly relationships with other people. The busyness of life. And lastly, this one's a little bit more deep, but I believe fear holds us back from pursuing relationships. Fear. The fear to open up. The fear to share. The, the fear to be vulnerable kind of hinders us. The fear, the fear to say, okay, this is, this is me. This is the real me. This is not the Instagram me. This is not the, the face. This is actually the real me. Are they going to like me? Are, are they going to judge me for something I do? Are they going to judge me because I slurp my spaghetti? I, I do that. <laughs> I do that. It's okay. I'm not sorry for that. I slurp my spaghetti. It tastes better. But, but are they going to judge you? Are they going to say something about you? And so we have this fear that hinders us from getting into relationships with other people friends. Regardless of what culture says or what thoughts you have, here's the point I want to make is that when we isolate ourselves from relationships, we step away from God's purpose for our lives. When we isolate, we step away from God's purpose because you and I were created to be in community with one another. We're created to lift each other. We're, we're created to, to, to encourage each other. We're created for each other. That's what God created us for, and we step away from God's purpose for our lives. Jesus modeled these qualities throughout his life, and so I want to really focus in on three relational qualities that Jesus modeled for us, um, and I want to kind of take, the, take from these too as well. So number one is this, is that Jesus gave acceptance. Jesus gave acceptance. Jesus welcomed people in. Jesus was, was approachable. He included others into what he was doing. You just get this picture of Jesus. He has kids on him, and kids are, he's making the kids laugh. And, like, Jesus, he includes, he was approachable. He welcomed others. He considered other people. He accepted other people. There's a story found in, in John chapter um, 4, and, and Jesus is, is going on his way with his, with his friends over to Samaria, and, and he goes to a well, and he sees a woman there, and and he asked her for a drink of water, and she's drawing uh, water from the well. And this is, some of you guys may know this story, but this is the converse, some of the conversation that Jesus had with her. He said, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Like, what are you even doing asking me? Like, we all know this. Like, you guys don't accept, uh, we don't accept each other. We're different. Why are you asking me for a drink, and Jesus says, if you knew, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. It didn't matter where, where this woman was from. It didn't matter who she worshipped or where she worshipped. It, it didn't matter even what, if you know the story, it didn't, it didn't matter what she had done in her life. Jesus said, listen, you, I don't think you understand the gift that's right in front of you, the gift that I will give you. And he said, it's, this is the gift I'm going to give you. It's called acceptance. It's called I, I, 
I want to include you. I accept you for who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can come into the family. You can come and share this, this relationship with me because of who God is. And we serve a God who's accepting. We serve a God who includes. And if you're here today and you feel like, man, are they going to accept me? Is, is God going to, is that church going to? Listen, God accepts you for who you are. He loves you and he has a plan for your life. And that's and that's the relationship of, that's the relational quality of Jesus that I, I love, man, because I'm a mess. We're all a mess. We all got, got flaws. We all have something that we, we deal with. But Jesus says, it's okay. I love you, and I accept you for who you are. Come to me. Come to me. Number two is this. Jesus says, Jesus gave encouragement. Jesus gave encouragement. Jesus, Jesus spoke life. He, he lifted up his friends. He, he, he was there. He had their back. He, he gave them words of, of affirmation. He comforted them. He assured them of the call that he had on their lives, but he was there to offer them. And, in, and over here in, in uh, John chapter 14, there's this, there's this dialogue going on between Jesus and his disciples. And at this, at this time, his, di his disciples were just kind of like, what are we doing? Where are we going to go? What happens when, the, where are you going to go? Are you going to come? Like, they're just kind of worried and discouraged about what's happening um, at that time. And Jesus spent that whole chapter, he's just encouraging them. And then he says this towards the end of the, of the chapter in verse 27. He says, listen, guys, he says, I leave you the gift of peace with you, my peace. In the, in the middle of, a, of the chaos, in the middle of the uncertainty, in the middle of the, I don't know what's going on here, Jesus says, listen, I leave you peace, my peace. And he says, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. He says, don't yield to fear. Don't be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. It's going to be okay. I'm giving you peace. Right now you're going through a storm. Right now you don't really understand what's going on. Guess what? Jesus says peace in your, in your situation, peace in your finances, peace in your relationships, because that's who Jesus is. He's, he's actually the prince of peace, and that's what he offers us. And if we can grasp, like, man, when we're going through some hard times, if we can grasp that we have a, a God who is relational and a God that wants to give us peace, we can get through our storms. We can get through those times. And so he gives peace to you in your storm. He is the God of peace, and he gives peace. And number three is this. Jesus gave security. Jesus gave security. And we all, we all want to be secure. We all want to know. We all have questions like about the future and what's going to happen and are we going to be okay. And, and Jesus gives that security. He gives that hope and that confidence because he's our refuge. He, brings that, he gives us that protection that we need to continue to move forward. In John chapter 11, we, we talked about the story of Lazarus and his sisters, and Lazarus passes away, and he's, he's in the tomb for four days, and, and his sisters go, and they send a message out to, to go get Jesus, to have Jesus come back, and because they're, they're just distraught, they're just, just discouraged, they're in despair, they don't know what they're going to do, they lost their brother, he's been dead, and they're just, they don't know what to do, they don't really know what the future holds, and, and so Jesus comes, and, and Martha's just like, listen, like, he's gone, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's already gone. He's been there for, for four days already. And Jesus says this in verse 25. He says, Martha, you don't have to wait till then. He's like, I am the resurrection and I am life eternal. And, he who cling, and, who, and anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. Will live forever. And the one who lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And in that moment, he assured Martha, he said, listen, this is not the end. Your life is in my hand for eternity. Right now, what you're experiencing, it's temporary. But know this, you'll have eternal life if you believe in me and you follow me and you're in relationship with me. You will have eternal life. It's the best plan that you've ever could be on is that I have eternal life. I don't have to pay for anything like, this is the ultimate plan. Jesus paid it on. He gives us security. He gives us a hope, an unwavering hope that us too, we don't have to worry. We know, like, this life is temporary, and we know, man, we got an inheritance. We got an eternal life that's waiting for us because Jesus gives us security. We're secure in him. We're secure in him. I don't think it's, it's enough, of course, though, to just know all this about Jesus 
Because here's the truth. Your relationship here on earth, it thrives from the overflow of your relationship with Christ. The, relations, the, the relationships you're in right now, they will thrive if you're in relationship with Christ. You will begin, once, once you know and you understand, like, you know what? I'm accepted by Jesus. I'm accepted by God. I don't, I don't need approval from anybody else. I don't need accept. I'm accepted because Jesus accepts me. Therefore, I can accept others. I can bring them in. I can, I can include them because he did it for me. I'm encouraged because Jesus encourages me. He lifts me up. Sometimes I'll, I'll get in my word and I'll read like in the Psalms and, and you just you see in the, in the Psalms just an encouragement as you read through his word and, and the spirit just begins to encourage you and he begins to speak and you're like, wow. And sometimes it's hard because you're just like, I need to tell somebody. I need to text somebody. I need to call somebody and say, hey, it's going to be okay. God has your back. God is for you. He's not against you. He has a plan for you. He has open doors for you because it's the overflow of what you understand that Jesus gives you, Okay. And so we can, we can accept others, we can encourage others, we can let people know, like, hey, it's going to be okay. You, you, you're secure in, in, in Jesus and in what he has for you because it thrives from, from our relationship with Christ. This is, the, this is the true heart of Jesus. This is the heart of God himself. And, and Jesus' heart was that we would come together and that we would be one. We would be a community of believers in relationship with one another. Look. Look what Jesus says over here in John chapter 17. In your notes, it's Luke. Change that to John. Sorry about that. But he says this, and I ask not only for these. This is crazy because Jesus doesn't just talk, pray for his disciples here. He actually prays for us. He prays for you today. And this is, this is his heart for you. He says not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. I pray for them to all be joined together as one, one body, one church, one community of believers. Even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one, I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me. The world will recognize that you sent me. The way we love each other, the way we're in relationship with one another, the way we encourage each other, the way we, we hang out with one another, it is a testament of who Jesus is. It is a testament. The world will look and they will say, man, like, I don't know about those people at Discovery, but, man, like, they're welcoming over there. They're accepting over there. Like, I just, I want to go see what's going on. Like, who loves like that? Who accepts like that? Like, they just keep encouraging me. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird at first, but it makes me feel good. Like, I'm, I'm feeling really good because they're affirming me. They're encouraging me. And guess what this does? It makes Jesus known. It glorifies Jesus. Your relationships with other people glorifies Jesus. It makes him known. It makes Jesus known. People are curious. We have small groups coming up, as Pastor Jason already mentioned, uh, next week, man. I encourage you guys. I know it's summertime, but man, get in a group. Get, get together with some people that are like-minded. Get, get together with some people that, that can share this relationship that you have with Jesus together, that you can grow with, that you can sharpen, that you can talk to about the same thing. Like, get in those relationships, man. You'll find some great people that want to do the same. You weren't, you weren't made to do this alone. We were made to do this together. So get, get connected to a small group. Starts next Sunday, the whole week and throughout the summer. So vital. So vital. Before I, I close, though, I want to I wanna give you three truths right here in pursuing. How, how do I, okay, we talked about Jesus, but how do I get into those? Like, what does that look like? And there's three truths that I think these are so important for, for all of our relationships and something for us to take, take away today. Number one is this. Pursue people in prayer and with intentionality. Pursue people with prayer and intentionality. I, I, I'm not sit, standing up here and saying, hey, just go give your heart and share your stuff with everybody. Like, I'm, def, I'm not saying that, you know. I think we should be praying and seeking the Lord and saying, God, like, send some people to me. Like, help me to discern. Help me to know, like, this is the person that I want. Send some mentors to me. That's what I need right now. Lord, send some mentors to me that I can talk to, that I can be in relationship. Send a couple, if you're a couple, send a couple that I can relate to and that we can talk and we can pray together. Like, pray. Like, the Lord will send those people to you if we're, if we're prayful and we're intentional about it. John chapter 2, there's a story here that Jesus says, now, uh, while he was in Jerusalem, 
at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. It says, but Jesus would not entrust himself to them. Jesus didn't even entrust himself to just anybody because he knew. He knew all people. He did not need any testimony about uh, mankind for he knew what was in each person because there were some people that just want something from you. Right here, they just wanted something from Jesus. They wanted to be his friend because they saw he was, he was performing these miracles. They, they kind of, they were just like, okay, what can we get from Jesus? He can do this for me. He can do this for me. He can do this for me. And Jesus knew, hey, this is, this is, not, this is not what I'm here for. And so he, he discerned. He was able to, to discern these things. Healthy relationships thrive on, on what I can give to it, not what I can get from it. And so you want to make sure that you're in relationships where you're not, people aren't just wanting something from you. Pray, ask the Lord, send me some people, Lord. Number two is this, love people in truth and grace. We learned about being honest with people. Um, and I would say, love people in truth, not your truth, God's truth. I would say, love them with the truth of God's word, not with the truth of my word, the truth of God's word, and give them grace, the same grace that was displayed and extended to you. Give people grace. Give your friends grace. Love on them. But be honest with them. Be truthful with them. That's, that's how good, really healthy relationships grow. Third thing is this, is grow. Grow with people through love and forgiveness. John 1.17 says, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Sorry, 1 Peter 4.8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. Healthy things grow. We all know that. What you put, you got to, plants grow, you got to put water in that. Healthy things grow. Relationships grow when they are rooted in forgiveness and love. That's how they grow. You may need to have some conversations and be like, you know what, can you forgive me for what I did to you? I apologize. I, I was, I don't know what I was thinking. Please, I'm sorry for doing that. Can you, this is, where, this is where relationships grows when we learn how to forgive one another. There might be some people right now that you're thinking of, man, like, I need to apologize. I, even if, even, even if, if, if I was right, even if they were wrong, like, I just, I need to make it right. I just need to go. If they're my friend, and I'm, I need to just apologize and say, I love you. Please forgive me. Let's move forward. Because when you can authentically forgive someone, you can fully love again. You can fully love your friends again. You can fully love your family again when you can, when you can practice this, this forgiving others. I want you guys to bow your head with me. This